Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash tiltedtripodmedia and become a member today and gain access to all of my secret content as well as other member-exclusive perks. And thank you for supporting the future of video. Welcome back to the Urbex Dead Mall series. Today we're in Benton Harbor, Michigan at the Orchards Mall. Now this mall is very well known throughout the Dead Mall community. It's kind of creepy when you walk in. It gives off this like apocalyptic vibe. And I think a lot of that has to do with just how abandoned this place feels. And even its surrounding areas, everything's like boarded up and just abandoned. And it's like, where did all the people go? Because while I was in this mall, I think I might have come across one person. It was so eerily quiet that any little tiny pin drop of a noise could be heard echoing throughout the mall. In fact, if someone whispered at the other end of the mall, I wouldn't doubt that you could probably hear it. I constantly heard from everyone about how all these seagulls would congregate around the mall, on the roof, in the parking lot, just everywhere. And it was like, you know, the Birds movie by Alfred Hitchcock. Remember that one? All the birds attacking anyways. So when I came to this mall, I was like, ooh, that's going to be really cool to capture. But of course, I went in the middle of winter. And, you know, if you know anything about seagulls, you don't get a ton of them in the winter. This mall is really close to uh, Lake Michigan. So in the summertime, yeah, you're going to get a lot of seagulls. Anyway, let's get into the mall's history. In 1974, the Mayor C. Warner Company would be the first to propose a mall in the Benton Harbor area, and they wanted to call it the Pipestone Mall. Okay, so I just wanted to pause here for a moment because I absolutely love it when malls do this. They collect photos over the years, and then they display them for everyone to see. Just to kind of like a timeline of what the mall used to be and what it is now. It's just so amazing. And sometimes this is the only way that you can see into the history of this mall and see what it used to be like. Because many people fail to realize, although we did have video cameras and camcorders prior to the year 2000, it really wasn't until the cell phone era where people started carrying cameras with them all the time and were, you know, documenting all these malls. So to be able to go back prior to the mid-2000s and see what it looked like is just absolutely amazing. So huge props goes out to the mall for displaying all of these amazing photos here. And now, back to the mall's history. 1976 would see rumors that Hudson's would be a potential anchor store. That same year, the land would be acquired by Westcor, and the mall would be built and opened in 1979. The original anchors and major tenants would include J.C. Penney, Sears, Walgreens, and York Steakhouse. And the mall wouldn't see a third anchor until 1992 when Elder Behrman would be added. The mid-1990s would see the loss of Walgreens as it would move out of the mall, and its space would stay vacant until Joanne Fabrics would replace it in the mid-2000s. General Growth Properties would acquire the mall in 1999, and the mall seemed to be doing quite well, because only a year later, several new stores including Bath & Body Works would be added to the mall, as well as Casual Corner and the Finish Line stores being remodeled. 2002 would see the mall being taken over by Sequoia Investments. And four new businesses would be added to the mall, including a Subway and a Chinese restaurant located in the food court. Alright, so what's left inside this mall today? Well, this Dr. Z's mattress store that we're looking at right here was really the only thing that I saw open other than the post office. And maybe one other store, but I don't remember the name of it. This mall is so dead, I was really surprised to see that it's actually still open. And as of this video, I'm not really sure what the plans are for this mall. They'll probably either just let it sit and rot or demolish it for something stupid like a business park or an Amazon warehouse. I was really tempted to go inside some of these open stores like this and explore them. However, I didn't want to risk being caught and then kicked out of the mall and not getting to film the entire place. And this brings us to the blocked off corridor right near the food court. I'm not quite sure what anchor store used to be down there. I want to say it was either Macy's or Elder Beerman. If you know, leave it down in the comment section below. Yep, and still no sign of the massive amounts of pooping seagulls everyone keeps talking about. I don't know, maybe if I get a chance I'll come back in the summertime when all the seagulls have returned. Was this storefront a Champs, maybe, or a Foot Locker, or one of those, like, sports shoe stores? Leave a comment down below. Can you believe it? 
Mervyn's is having a super sale just in time for Christmas shopping. I'll save on all my presents. Yes, as soon as they open. 60% off all fine jewelry, gold, diamonds. Yep, I'll be saving any minute now. A super sale just in time for Christmas. So I'm a little early. More time to window shop. Open, open. open. Mervyn Super Sale starts Saturday, 8 a.m. Now on to the food court. It's not the most amazing food court I've ever seen, but for a small town mall, it is amazing because it has some awesome retro vibes. It just kind of takes you back to the 1990s, back when they had all of this uh, tile flooring like this with all the patterns and the colors in it. And, you know, all the tables and chairs are probably all original from back then. It's just really cool. I'm not quite sure what the stars are for. Like, maybe someone can leave a comment down below and uh, clue me into that. I was kind of confused, like, what are the, the stars on the ceiling for? Yes, even down here in the vacant food court, they have all kinds of old photographs of the mall, newspaper clippings. It was just super cool to see all of this. You know what? Come to think of it, when I entered the mall, they didn't have a directory, which was kind of weird. In fact, this is the first mall directory I came across while exploring this mall, all the way over in the food court, which is completely vacant, like there's no stores over here. But at least I found one, and it can give us a little glimpse into what stores used to be in the mall. I highly recommend that you head on over to my Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box below and check out the raw and real edition of this video because some of the sounds or lack thereof sounds in this mall were just really eerie and really creepy and you'll get to hear all the, the buzzing lights and just all the, the amazing ambiance that this mall had to offer.
thanks for taking a walk with me through the Orchards Mall in Benton Harbor, Michigan. For more awesome mall content just like this, check out the video on screen or head on over to the Patreon, link in the description box below and on screen, to check out the Raw and Real Edition, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Urbex Dead Mall series.